E3 2017, Microsoft finally fully lifted the curtain on the powerful Xbox One successor, Scorpio, but now it's called Xbox One X. It's entering this new cycle of weird in-between console updates along with, you know, the already released PS4 Pro. But let's break down the two with the new information we have. Firstly, let's get the specs out of the way since we already knew most of this stuff. But for those of you that don't know, pay attention. Let's talk about the memory. Xbox One X has 12 gigabytes of GDDR5 RAM, while PS4 Pro has eight gigs. This is extremely high quality fast memory for either, so it is a win-win. But the bottom line is Xbox has more usable memory here. More RAM lets you, in layman's terms, have more things loaded into console memory without it really swapping other things to your hard disk. The most easy to describe thing that this affects is world size and like how quickly worlds and textures can be streamed in games. Now, both consoles have custom eight core CPUs. If you're real hardcore and nasty into teraflops, the Xbox One S has six teraflops of performance, while the PS4 Pro runs at 4.2 teraflops. Xbox One X's clock speeds are a little higher at 2.3 gigahertz versus PS4 Pro's 2.1 gigahertz, but the architecture here matters most. Microsoft is happy to tout their memory bandwidth at 326 gigabits per second versus PS4 Pro's 218, but both have one terabyte hard drives and the Xbox One X has a leg up on the optical front if you think about it because it has a 4K UHD Blu-ray drive compared to PS4 Pro's standard Blu-ray drive. But the real meat here is graphical fidelity and resolution. Now 4K is definitely the big buzzword. There's often a lot of confusion for some people and even some misrepresentation by the big companies. Not everything is going to be true 100% 4K native because that's very taxing on hardware, even on some good PCs. A large portion of PS4 Pro's games are not rendered at native 4K, believe it or not, but are upscaled to 4K using some pretty impressive encoding tech. If you don't have a 4K TV, PS4 Pro's added power can make certain games just have better graphics, be it frame rate, extra lighting, or whatever. Xbox One X is interesting because Microsoft is really pushing that true 4K factor. It too can not only make games look better, but make things look more impressive on 1080p TVs as well. While already existing big first party Xbox titles are getting updates to push 4K on the Xbox One X, like Forza Horizon 3 and Gears of War 4, many of PlayStation's big hits have also gotten PS4 Pro updates as well. Uncharted 4, for example, doesn't run at native 4K, but it's rendered up to it and it looks pretty damn good. While we know Gears of War 4 will also get a resolution bump on the One X, we don't know if it's going to be native 4K or using clever trickery like Uncharted. Either way though, things look damn good here. Look at this. But the thing that made my ears perk up was when Microsoft showed off Forza 7 running at native 4K resolution at 60 frames per second. That is impressive for a console and the game looks great. But frame rate aside though, take a look at these high res stills of both Forza 7 and PlayStation's Gran Turismo Sport for reference. Things are looking good on both ends, but that resolution quality is going to potentially give Forza 7 a slight edge to the naked eye, especially since it's native 4K. But again, like I said, 4K is a fickle thing right now to consoles. The Xbox One X might help, but it still won't be a perfect world seeing as 4K resolution on huge, beautiful games is still taxing on any console out there. But I gotta reiterate, non-native 4K still looks great and I imagine it getting lumped in with true native 4K a lot of the time. For PS4 Pro, we haven't seen a lot of titles do this, but the fact that Xbox One X will have Forza 7 at 4K native 60 FPS is really interesting to me. We'll have to wait and see though until Xbox One X is out in the wild for a while to see how many titles it can really get to true 4K and how well they even run. So let's leave this category as to be continued for now. But back to hardware, take a quick look at the ports, which I do think are important. We've learned that the Xbox One X has the same ports as the Xbox One S, and there is a quite a plethora of ports there. The only big difference is PS4 Pro doesn't have that HDMI pass-through port, but for most people, that's a non-issue. And the Xbox One X controller is unchanged from the newest revision of the Xbox One S controller, which feels super nice and premium. It's got like this nice matte finish. The PS4 Pro and Slim did introduce a newer DualShock 4 with a slightly redesigned touch bar as well. Sometimes it's really the little things in life, honestly. But now, of course, let's talk price. The Xbox One X is releasing November 7th worldwide for $499. PS4 Pro, as you know, is already out and it runs at usually $399, barring any last minute price cut announcement from Sony at E3 that comes after we make this video. For many, these are obnoxious prices and it's totally understandable. For other console gamers, they're down to drop big bucks for the best specs, but that's up for you to decide. We're not gonna judge you either way, so don't worry. And it is nice that the companies as of right now are still pushing parity very much in the sense that if you buy an Xbox One game, it's Xbox One S or Xbox One X. And the same thing with PS4. You can buy it for PS4, PS4 Slim, or PS4 Pro, and it works the same. And you'll still get your game regardless of what console you have. Now, while on paper, the Xbox One X may be technically more powerful than the PS4 Pro, it's down to the games. Where do you want to play? What do you want to play? And how? That's up for you to decide. 
But that's some information we wanted to go through about the newly announced Xbox One X and the PS4 Pro. Whether you're a Sony gamer, an Xbox gamer, or a PC gamer laughing at us in the corner, let's talk about all the nitty gritty details down in the comments. How do you feel about 4K gaming? Do you even have a 4K television? Let's all just break this down and talk down in the comments because it is a very murky time for a console release cycle. So I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys think. But if you had a good time with this video and you're enjoying our E3 videos, clicking that like button helps us out a ton. And we really do appreciate it. But subscribing if you're new is also a good idea because we put out stuff every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.